The DCEU has another film entry that comes out this week with James Gunn's The Suicide Squad, and after seeing the film early in the UK and doing my video essay on it, I have a new updated list for all 11 DCEU movies. There are fantastic movies, ones that aren't so great, but also ones that were interfered with by the studio, and I'm going to be presenting this from worst to best with my own brief thoughts on each film that I mention. But before I get into it, if you want to keep up to date on any of my future content on DC's latest films, then don't forget to support this video by giving it a like rating, subscribing to the channel, and turning on your notifications. Also, feel free to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, and Instagram at Cortex Videos, which is all linked in the description below. But without further ado, let's dive into my 2021 ranked list of every movie in the DCEU. So starting with the original Justice League, this is a film that will be completely forgotten over time. Its poor villain, awful CGI, and lame story are just a few of the problems that this superhero team up faced. The group feels underutilised and rushed through a stuffed and generic telling of the story, with a second-rate villain who isn't even a main threat to the Justice League. By not including Darkseid or Steppenwolf's motivations, you don't have any feeling of threat, which in turn made the character feel like he was pulled out of a video game. And even some video game villains are better developed than this. You can also see how much influence the Avengers director Joss Whedon had in trying to deliver a lighter, more fun tone to the film. However, it seems that certain aspects of the movie, like the villain and the main plot, were so set in stone when he joined the film that he had to work with what was already there. Years later, when you see how the film treats its elements like the female characters, compared to 2021's Snyder Cut, the 2017 film is almost unwatchable. The studio cut of Justice League is placed bottom of my list. While Margot Robbie's take on Harley Quinn won over fans and inspired a hit Halloween costume and cosplay, there's not much else anyone loved about this movie. The film was overstuffed with too many uninteresting characters, a comical CG mess of a villain, and Jared Leto's strange gangster take on the Joker wasn't well received. Despite making over $746 million at the box office, Suicide Squad is in a league with some of the other worst superhero movies, including Elektra, Catwoman, and Fox's recent Fantastic Four reboot attempt. This was mainly due to Warner Brothers interfering and making the film more of a music video with too much of a light-hearted tone. David Ayer had Christopher Nolan's editor Lee Smith working on the film and replacing that with a trailer company to craft the edit already creates problems. We've just seen with James Gunn's The Suicide Squad that creative control can result in a much better film and it's quite clear that Ayer wasn't given that along with only having a couple of weeks to write the script. Maybe someday we might see that true version of David Ayer's Suicide Squad, but the one that came out in 2016 sits in at number 10. While Wonder Woman 1984 is an enjoyable, feel-good sequel, as long as you don't think about it too hard, it's the performances over the somewhat messy story which will keep you watching this slightly bloated sequel. Chris Pine and Gal Gadot's palpable reunion as star-crossed lovers three years after the original is the film's greatest strength. Fast forwarding 66 years into 1984, it's cool to watch a role reversal from the 2017 film as Steve Trevor tries to get into fashion and technology in the future. 
Godot also steals numerous scenes by just reacting with her eyes, and Pedro Pascal pulls off playing one of DC's zanier villains, with at least one line fans may quote after watching. But while the film has many decent performances and some great scenes like the flight sequence, there are many plot holes and most importantly, Patty Jenkins helming the script doesn't help the matters. She's a fantastic director, but her writing on the sequel produced some more than cringe lines of dialogue in moments of development that just became even more obvious on rewatch. The idea for the film was good, but the execution and the script felt a little too silly for a film that was a sequel to one of DC's best origin films. I rank Wonder Woman 1984 at number 9. At the number 8 spot, Margot Robbie returns in the role she was born to play. In Birds of Prey, she effortlessly brings the quirky and fun spirit of the Joker's former sidekick to life from the comic pages. DC has always had a leg up on developing its female characters on screen, and while highlighting Harley, the film introduces at least two new characters that fans will want to see more of in the future. Huntress and Black Canary can stand alongside the likes of DC's Catwoman or Poison Ivy, and it will be interesting to see what they do with them going forward. On the villain front, Ewan McGregor brings to life one of DC's famous villains with the eccentric and despicable mobster Roman Sionis. The film doesn't hone in on its strengths all the time, and the unorthodox storytelling can be pushed to the side in favour of fun. Upon a second viewing, this becomes more obvious and while I liked the movie, I don't think it's the strongest entry in the DCEU. Still, maybe we will get some of the characters adapted in other films down the line, as they do each deserve more screen time. And I'm sure we'll get loads more of Harley Quinn, as seen in the last few movies. Coming in at number 7, Shazam. So while Shazam may not be a Batman or Superman movie, it is filled with product placement for both heroes. But regardless of fans wanting to see more of DC's two biggest characters, Shazam on its own is a pretty decent movie. It's not the best superhero movie I've ever watched, and the first half hour is a bit of a slog, but it does pick up when Levi finally enters the picture. This movie is really just a superhero version of the movie Big, and for some reason, the DCEU continues down the path of terrible looking CG villains with seven ghastly ghouls, taking you right out of the film. It is a surprise when several more superheroes show up near the end of the movie, and it makes up for some of the project's less inspired moments. But at the end of the day, while Shazam is pretty funny, it's not the DC movie that fans of the brand needed, nor is it my personal favourite. At the next spot is James Wan's visually dazzling superhero entry, Aquaman. This film has so much going on that it easily feels like several movies in one, and while I don't necessarily believe that Aquaman is better than some of the other films before in terms of story, it does deliver these ideas through its production and visuals to a more satisfying degree. It has some much better shots such as Wan's horror-infused example of Jason Momoa and Amber Heard diving into the trench-infested waters with only the the light of a red flare to guide them out of harm's way. Momoa is not only convincing as Aquaman 2, but he also helped redefine the DC hero that became the punchline of every joke because of his original take on the character. Even if all of his jokes didn't land in the film, it was easy to see why Momoa had a blast as the King of the Seven Seas. They introduced all the elements to set up future Aquaman movies and continue the world building that was set out. The first movie also grossed over a billion dollars at the worldwide box office, meaning that the second will also do really well.
Moving into the top five of my list, the latest DCEU film, The Suicide Squad, is one of the best in the universe so far. James Gunn delivers a political thriller with a big statement about the real villains of the world wrapped up in a superhero movie. While fans receive gruesome deaths and some which will shock you, alongside no holds barred action, the film also unexpectedly has a lot of heart. Gunn's greatest gift is his ability to make you fall in love with some of the most obscure characters who you really have no business caring about in the first place. Fans are going to love Polka Dot Man, the quite hilarious Peacemaker, Idris Elba's Bloodsport, and Sylvester Stallone's King Shark, who just want some new friends. But not only is The Suicide Squad the strangest comic book movie you'll ever watch, it's also one of the smartest that delivers on all the different tones of a comic book movie. Next, at number 4, is the original Wonder Woman. So while many viewers were not fans of the third act of the film, the rest of Wonder Woman more than makes up for it. One of the best movie scenes of the year occurs about an hour into Wonder Woman, where actress Gal Gadot debuts the superhero costume as she steps out of the trenches and slowly makes her way across a war-torn stretch of land during World War I called No Man's Land, an area no one has been able to cross in over a year. Bullets ricochet off her bracelets as she moves faster across the barren wasteland until she clears the other side of danger. Not only does Wonder Woman power through the potential pitfalls of the modern day superhero movie, which includes a weak plot, boring villain, and lackluster third act, but it also shows once and for all that a female focused superhero movie can be as strong, heroic, thrilling, and funny. Chris Pine is also a scene stealer, but the best thing Wonder Woman may have done was kill off the hero's love interest. It's something Marvel movies haven't had the guts to do, stressing on the emotional importance of the people close to the hero. And this makes Diana Prince all the better for it, allowing her room to grow as the iconic superhero. Wonder Woman is really a fantastic origin superhero movie that's up there with some of the best that's ever been put out. Rounding out the top three is the ultimate edition of Zack Snyder's Batman v Superman. So when I originally came out of the cinema from seeing the theatrical version of the film, I was a little disappointed. I still liked the film, but I felt like there were elements missing or things that weren't developed enough within the plot, such as the burning of the bodies in the desert and how that was framed on Superman, alongside Lois Lane and her investigation into the bullets she picked up from the crime. But alongside this, the Ultimate Edition adds shots to scenes, making the whole film feel better paced and more like a complete picture. Over many rewatches, the film has got better and better, working its way up my list and into the top three. While I still prefer Snyder's two other films, I do think that Batman v Superman is an intriguing look into how people would react to the actions of the most powerful superhero and how this can be manipulated to change people's perceptions. It also successfully introduced Ben Affleck as Batman, who is to this day one of my favourite interpretations of the character behind Christian Bale's In the Dark Knight trilogy. Snyder balanced his focus on Superman with a take on Batman that got to the core problems of the character and the grief that he suffers post his parents' death. He connects Batman and Superman on this very issue while successfully introducing a fan favourite character in Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman. I expect the film to go further up my list the more I rewatch it. Just missing out on the top spot is Zack Snyder's Justice League. After the travesty of his daughter's death and Warner Brothers changing his vision inside out, 
Zack Snyder delivered on the fan campaign to release his version of Justice League. A new authentic take on the villain adds a more compelling narrative to the film instead of some third-rate sidekick villain who simply wants to conquer the earth. Now you almost feel bad for this new version who clearly just wants some attention from Darkseid, the boss he worships. Cringeworthy dialogue, Henry Cavill's mustache and the Russian family are all gone this time around. Diverse heroes have been reinstated and most of the 2017 film's portrayals of characters have been nixed or altered. Snyder's long-fabled vision for the Justice League is a superior film to the theatrical cut in every sense of the word and it develops every character to an equal degree. The production is fantastic, the music is energised, and you can only fill the entire screen by watching it on the biggest IMAX screens in the world. It's a shame we never got it released that way to begin with, and it's also disappointing that we might never see a sequel to this brilliant film. You never know with the Discovery merger, but at least HBO Max gave Snyder a chance for his vision to be shown to the world. Apart from a few scenes that could have been cut, this version is a superhero masterpiece of godly proportions, and at least Snyder was able to show what he could deliver with creative control. At the number one spot is a film that Zack Snyder did have creative control for, and over the years it has quickly become one of the most celebrated superhero movies with the most impactful story on this list. I absolutely loved Man of Steel when it came out, but many fans and critics at the time were quick to tear the film down. Countless early reviews used the word brooding to describe the movie and criticised the destruction on show. The giant controversial action scene aside, anyone believing it was a depressing and dark film was missing the point of what Snyder was trying to do. This movie wasn't delivering us a full-fledged Superman, instead, it was giving us a Clark Kent who was learning how to be Superman and accepting the fact that it was okay to be different from everyone else. But when you bring a god and his eventual enemies that follow him to Earth, godly beings who are more powerful than anyone on the planet, you are bound to get the destruction you do. This is the point and Snyder approached Superman in realistic fashion, showing reactions to his growth into the man of tomorrow we know him to be, and showing his growing relationship with Lois Lane, alongside the relationship with his earthly parents. They all deliver great performances across the board, and the film does a great job at showing us Clark Kent's growth throughout his life. And alongside this, Zod is a fantastic villain with his motivations and actions developed equally. The production is outstanding, with Hans Zimmer's score being a standout that can be part aspiring and part dramatic, a perfect fit for the character. Man of Steel is an unforgettable superhero film that will only grow with age, and in my opinion, it is truly ahead of its time. But that was my updated ranked list of every movie in the DCEU so far. I think one thing that sticks out while going back over these films is that my favourites have tended to be the ones with a more central director's vision and ones which totally feel more grounded and darker, fitting DC as a brand. And don't get me wrong, the ones at the top still have moments of humour, like Wonder Woman and James Gunn's The Suicide Squad, but the humour works and they don't focus on bringing something that's so familiar to, say, the films of Marvel. They focus on telling a relatable story and don't hold back while telling that story at the same time. The filmmaking is rewatchable in these types of films too, unlike the studio versions of Justice League and Suicide Squad, which just felt bland and completely out of character. But hopefully, Warner Brothers have learnt their lesson in this regard, and we will start to get more DC films with the creative control that they deserve. The Snyder Cut and The Suicide Squad are two examples this year that make that painfully obvious to me. 
But what do you think of my list and how would you rank all 11 movies in the DCEU? Let me know down below in the comment section. For more breakdown videos on all upcoming films in the DCEU, then subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like rating and follow me on social media via the links in the description. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've been Cortex and as always, make some noise.